YouTube another video and this time I'm going to show how a data bus works and um, how to work with it. Now a data bus is uh, it's pretty trivial, it's just a connection where different elements tap into that same connection uh, so all the elements receive the same da data at the same time and we can transfer data across the board and then distribute it uh, where we want to but um, this is what this uh, video is going to be about and I just thought that it would be nice to show exactly how, uh, how it works. So let's first start by having a look at what we have on the breadboard here. So here in the middle you can see our data bus and it's pretty much just four lines that the different elements connect into. We have here four LEDs that will always show us uh, which data currently sits on the data bus and we have a 4-bit dip switch that I use to place data on the data bus. Aside from that, we have four uh, registers, LS373, you saw them in a previous video. They are 8-bit registers, but um, I'm only using 4-bit since I don't have really any uh, room left here on the breadboard. But um, aside from these uh, registers, um, as you can see, A, B, C, and D, a, B, and C, uh, they will uh, receive data from the data bus and then they will output it uh, using these LEDs, four LEDs that connect to each one uh, of the uh, register's output pins. And the D register, it can receive data from the data bus, but uh, here I've added a 4-bit dip switch, another one, which will allow us to take whatever value sits in uh, register D and place it back on the data bus where we can use it uh, for other things and that's what we're going to see in the, in the example that I'm going to show you. So first of all let's start uh, by saying that the, the circuit is currently on and uh, nothing comes out here on the output uh, of the, 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 the data bus and uh, what I did before I start this, started this video I connected all the output enable pins on each uh, register. Um, I gave them a low so that uh, we're going to first start by uh, seeing that uh, whatever data I place on the data bus is received simultaneously by all the elements that connect to it. But um, it doesn't mean that all the elements receive the same data. That if you saw the previous video talking about the LS373. Uh, uh, um, we can decide which, uh, which element will actually store the data so that we can use it later on. But let's have a look. I'm going to start by uh, just raising uh, a single bit on, uh, on the data bus and I'm going to do it using this dip switch here. So I'm going to raise the first bit and you can see that currently we have the value 1 sitting on the data bus and all the registers since we have the output enabled pins uh, set to low all the registers uh, give the same output which is whatever sits on the data bus and that goes for all the pins that I can raise or lower whichever value I'm going to uh, place on the data bus but you saw that and again as I said in the previous video that's not really the way that we want to work with it so I'm going to quickly um, just um, set all the output enable pins back to high so that we don't receive any outputs from the registers and uh, then we're going to start placing values into each register the way that uh, we choose to do it. So right now I've set all the output enable pins uh, back to high and you can see that if I raise the first bit uh, we have the value 1 on the data bus but none of the registers will actually output it. So let's start by um, just um, placing values in each register and here I made a, a list so that we can track which value we're placing in each register. We have A, B, C and D and we're going to start with uh, A. In A I'm going to uh, place the value 3. So first of all I'm going to set the value 3 on the data bus and you can see that right now it's, it's on the data bus and A all all the registers uh, receive the same data but we're going to take only the latch enable pin from uh, register A and we're going to set it to low and now we're going to 
lower all the pins on the data bus so the data is gone and we're going to move to the next register which is B and B I'm going to set the value 8 so I'm going to raise the fourth uh, bit right here you can see we have the value 8 on the on the data bus and again I'm going to take the latch enable pin from register B and set it to low as well there we go so now again I'm going to lower the data no data on the data bus and we're going to move to register C and C we're going to uh, set it with a 15 so I'm going to raise all the pins on the data bus and here we have the value 15 sitting on the data bus right now and again I'm going to take the latch enable uh, pin from register C set it to low and again lower all the data on the data bus and the last one is register D we're going to set it with the value 9 so I'm going to raise the first bit and the last bit and here we have the value 9 sitting on the data bus and once more I will take um, the, the latch enable pin on register D, set it to low and lower all the data on the data bus. So what we did now is uh, we set a value in each one of these registers, a separate value. And now we're going to enable all the outputs on each one and we're going to uh, see exactly um, if it retained the values or not. So we're going to start with register A. If I put the output enable um, to, to low, it should give us the value 3, and I assume that that's what's going to happen. So here we go, we've outputted uh, whatever uh, sits in register A, and we received the value 3. If I do the same uh, for B, we need to receive an 8 on B, so I'm going to set the output enable to low. And we have the value 8 sitting in B. And the same will go for C. I will set the, the output enable to low and we get a 16 just like we placed it uh, inside. And also goes for D. Set the output enable to low and we have the value 9 that we stored inside the D register. So that's how we have distributed the data using our data bus to each one of the elements. We decided which element will store which data that currently sits on the data bus. So uh, what we're going to do right now is um, I'm going to take um, the, the latch enable pin from, uh, from register A and I'm going to set it back to high so we lost whatever is sitting in uh, register uh, A and I'm also going to uh, raise the output enable so that we don't have any output. And what I'm going to do now, I want to take the value that sits in D. Maybe that value um, is a result that came from somewhere. And I want to move it from the register D to the register A. Currently, you can see that we don't have any um, value sitting on the data bus. So we have all zeros and obviously all zeros here. So here I have my 4-bit uh, dip switch. Regardless of which value sits here, I'm just going to raise all the pins just to make a connection and that's what I'm going to do right now so I've raised all the pins and you can see that our data bus now holds the value 9 that sits in register D I'm going to take the latch enable uh, pin from register A set it to low then I'm going to lower whatever comes out of register D so again we cleared the data bus and now I'm going to set the output enable of A back to low and we have the value 9. Previously it had the value 3, now we have the value 9 that sat previously in D and we moved it from register D through the data bus to register A. That's how it works, that's how a data bus works and that's how um, you basically work with it. Uh, in a bigger system you would control everything obviously not by moving wires uh, by hand but using flip-flops or um, in, in bigger configurations you already have chips, controllers that would control the data bus and make sure that everything goes in the right way. But that's it, that was the explanation.
about uh, how a data bus works and how to work with it. Hope you liked it and hope you liked my videos. And that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.